Hey guys, today we are going to apply vectors to real-world situations. First, find the resultant magnitude and direction of two 10-pound forces as shown in the diagram. So if there's some object right here and there are two 10-pound forces pulling it in these two directions, what is the actual magnitude and direction of the force. So how much force is being applied and in what direction. Okay, so here we have a vector that is represented by 10 pounds of force. So the magnitude of this vector is 10 and it is going at 20 degrees. So in polar form, it would look like this, 10 comma 20 degrees. Okay, now we have another one right here that's also 10 pounds of force. So it has a magnitude of 10. Its direction is not 20, it's also not 30. It goes all the way back to here, and that is the combination of these two, which is 50 degrees. To find the resulting force, we need to add these two vectors together. And in order to do that, we have to change them first into component form. Okay, so for component form, here we have 10 cosine 20 degrees and 10 sine 20 degrees. Cosine gets us an X, sine gets us a Y, which is something we learned a couple units ago when we talked about trigonometry. Okay, so 10 cosine 20, so I'll check the mode, and we are in degree mode. Okay, so 10 Cosine 20 is 9.40, so the x component is 9.40, and the y component, 10 sine 20, is 3.42. Okay, so there is our first vector in component form. Then we'll do the same for this vector, 10 cosine 50 and 10 sine 50. 10 cosine 50, 6.43, and 10 sine 50, 7.66. Okay, so there they are both in component form. Now we can add these two together. So we have 9.40 plus 6.43, 15.83, and 7.66 plus 3.42 is 11.08. Okay, so here is the resulting vector in component form. Now I want to know the magnitude and the direction of the combination of these two forces. So for the magnitude, we do the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, 15.83 squared plus 11.08 squared. Okay, I actually want that under a square root. And I get 19.32. Okay, so that means there is 19.32 pounds of force being applied to this object. And in what direction? So for the direction, we do arctan y over x. And because we are in the first quadrant, we add zero. Over here, we would add 180, 180, 360. So arctangent y over x. And we get 34.99 degrees. And that is the direction. So with these two 10 pound forces pulling in these two directions, the result is 19.32 pounds of force at a direction of 34.99 degrees.
Next, we have a 100-pound block of ice sitting on a steel ramp, inclined 35 degrees with the level floor. So here's the floor, and we have a 35-degree inclined steel ramp. There's a block of ice on it right now that weighs 100 pounds. Assuming there's no friction, so it can just slide freely down, what force parallel to the ramp is necessary to keep the block from sliding down the ramp? Okay. Now, the way gravity works, this 100 pounds is pushing straight down. Okay, Gravity doesn't pull this direction, it pulls down. The ramp is forcing it to go in this direction, but it does not have the same 100 pounds going down the ramp. 100 pounds goes this way, it's going to be less than 100 pounds going this way. The amount of force required to hold it exactly where it is is equal to the amount of force that it has sliding down the ice, okay, or sliding down the ramp, okay? So to find the force you would have to pull this direction, you find how much force is going this direction, and you have to match that force going back this other direction to hold it exactly where it is. More force would start pulling it up the ramp, okay? So here's how we could do that. We can tilt this and put it on an x, y axis. So here's my x axis. Here is my y axis. Okay, right here is the vector's x component. If I can find that x component, then I can find out how much force it has going down the ramp, and I can match that force to keep it from going down the ramp. Okay, now if I put this right here, this is the vector's y component but I don't really need to know the vector's y component. I only need the x component, okay? Now, I need to know this measure right here. So I've got 90 degrees right here, okay? And right here is going to be 35 degrees. How many degrees are here? So I've got 90, which leaves 90 left in the triangle. 90 minus 35 is 55. So there's a 55 degree angle right here. Okay, so now I can use that to find out this x component. An x component is a cosine. Okay, so 100 being the hypotenuse, 100 cosine 55 will give me the x component of this vector. So 100 cosine 55 is 57.36, and that is in pounds. Okay, so this ice has 57.36 pounds of force heading down the ramp. If I apply that same amount of force going the other direction, it will stay exactly where it is. Okay, so the force necessary to keep the block from sliding down the ramp is 57.36 pounds of force. Now let's review some basics about vectors. So first, we're going to find the resultant vector r by combining these four vectors. Now I like to leave the longest vector right where it is, not because I have to, but because I just don't want to draw the longest vector again. So I'll leave this one right here, and I'll take this one and slide it up here. Okay, now this vector here goes right 3 and up 2. So when I slide it over to here, from here I'll go right 3 and up 2, and that leaves me right there. Okay, then I'm going to take this vector and slide it up to here. Now this vector goes right 3 and down 6. So from here, when I slide it up, I'm going to go right 3 and down 6. And that's right here. Then I'll take this vector, the only one I have left, and slide it over here. And this vector goes down 2, and it ends right there. So my final vector, my resultant vector, vector r, starts at this initial tail and goes to this final head. So here is vector r. Okay, next I'm going to find the sum of these four vectors algebraically. Now they are given in polar form, so that means we're going to write our final answer in polar form, but I can't just add them in polar form. I have to change them to component form 
then add those components together, and then I can convert that back to polar form. So my first vector, 10 at 38 degrees, if I want the x coordinate or the x component, I would do this, x equals 10 cosine 38. And the y component is 10 sine 38. Now when we think of x, we should automatically with trig think of cosine, and when we think of y, we should think of sine. Okay, so in my calculator, the first thing I'm going to do is check the mode. I want to make sure I'm in degrees, and I am. So I type in 10 cosine 38 and 10 sine 38. And there's my x and y components. So I have 7.88 and 6.16. So in component form, 7.88, 6.16. 0.16. Okay, and that's inside of these pointy parentheses, which are actually called chevrons. Okay, so in my chevrons in component form, there's my x and y components. So for vector n, I'll do 18 cosine 171 and 18 sine 171. Okay, so I get negative 17.78 and 2.82. Okay, next I have 12 cosine 253 and 12 sine 253. So my components are negative 3.51 and negative 11.48. And last I have 7 cosine negative 24 and 7 sine negative 24. So I have 6.39 and negative 2.85. Okay, now I can combine these by adding the x components and then adding the y components. Okay, so my x component is negative 7.02. And my y component is negative 5.35. So there is the sum of these two vectors in component form. But I started in polar form. So we will end in polar form. Polar form is magnitude and direction. So for the magnitude, we have the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Negative 7.02 squared plus negative 5.35 squared. Now these numbers are all... Um, approximate numbers. They're not exact. So there's no sense in trying to keep an exact answer here. So we're just going to type in exactly what's on our paper. So we have 8.83 as our magnitude. And then the direction is arctangent y over x. Okay, now this puts me into the third quadrant. So when I actually graph this, 
negative 7.02 and then negative 5.35 puts us right about here. So what we're about to find is this measure right here, this reference angle. And we get an angle of 37.31 degrees. Okay, but that is only this reference angle. I need the standard angle. So I'm going to have to add this 180. And I get 217.31. Okay, so in polar form, we have 8.83, comma, 217.31 degrees.